This is a 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, which is the JK series model of the Wrangler, sold from the 2007 to 2017 model year. When the JK Wrangler was first introduced back in 2007, it was the first full redesign of the Wrangler, including body, frame, and suspension. With the JK series, we also get the introduction to the four-door Unlimited model, as all prior generations of the Wrangler were only available in two-door configuration. Fast forward a number of years and four-door models of the Wrangler account for 75% of total sales of the Wrangler. The JK Wrangler also sees a major interior update in 2011 and a huge improvement to the powertrain for 2012. Now in terms of styling on the Wrangler, it pays tribute to the original Willys Jeep from World War II, but it's advanced quite a bit over the years. For starters, it has grown a lot in size, especially when configured in the four-door unlimited package. It's got a much more contemporary look to it, a lot of huge improvements in terms of the powertrain, uh, tech, luxury features. Although it pays tribute to that original Willys Jeep, the vehicle is completely different from that original Jeep. Now, uh, the Wrangler is available in a number of different trim package offerings and special editions. The primary three packages on the Wrangler are the Sport model, the Sahara, and the Rubicon, but on top of that, they've got a wide range of available packages. This model is the Altitude, which basically takes everything that you get in the Sahara in terms of luxury and tech features and adds a number of aesthetic enhancements to kind of set it apart. Up here at the front, you'll see that it's got a matte black grille. It's got the gloss black inserts here, as well as on the Jeep lettering. It's got this gloss black plastic piece on the bumper, a revised wheel package, again in gloss black. You'll see we've got body colored fenders and roof on the vehicle. And then again, gloss black insert right here. Likewise, you'll see inside the cabin, we've got a number of those gloss uh, black accents as well. Now the Wrangler is a convertible model, so very unique for an SUV, adds to the allure of this vehicle. Uh, Wrangler is really just a really cool vehicle overall. You do make a lot of compromises in terms of ride quality, wind noise, uh, functionality in terms of just ergonomics, um, blind spots inside, but it's all traded off for this cool factor that you don't get from any other vehicle on the market and incredible off-road capability. So the Wrangler comes standard with a soft top, but then you also have this available hard top that can be removed from the vehicle. You can either remove the entire hard top or you can just remove these panels above the driver and front passenger seat. So a really cool feature that you don't get from other models. And again, just kind of elevates that cool status that you get with the Wrangler. Now on top of that, again, it's paying tribute to that original Willys Jeep. And so we've got some design cues that you don't see on any other vehicle. We've got these fenders that stick out from the body on both sides, as well as in the rear. Again, very unique feature. And of course, it's also really handy for accommodating oversized wheels and tires, which many Jeep owners do. I kind of feel like, although these wheels look really good, there's kind of this rule that if you get a Wrangler, you've got to replace the stock wheels and tires with something that's oversized. You'll see that the front bumper is also designed to maximize front approach angle, and likewise, rear departure angle is maximized with the dimensions of the vehicle in this rear bumper. Now you do miss out a little bit in terms of breakover angle with the four-door model. We've got the longer wheelbase. It's gonna make it a little bit less off-road capable than your two-door model, but still a very capable model. You're not gonna find many other four-doors as capable as this vehicle. Coming around to the back, we've got these tail lights that again pay tribute to the old Jeeps. Pretty cool little design cue there. Likewise, license plate holder. And then of course, gotta have your wheel and tire mounted on the back on a true off-road vehicle. So it looks pretty cool. Also uh, has some functionality because you're taking the wheel outside of the vehicle. So you've got more cargo space inside and by removing it from underneath the vehicle, again, helps with that rear departure angle and clearance. So really great looking vehicle. Um, you know, as much as you miss out on some of that functionality inside of the vehicle, you miss out in terms of ride quality, uh, with just the overall design of this vehicle. It's very old school in that sense. It's all paid for in terms of cool styling. Looking inside the Wrangler, you'll see this is the major improvement that we get with the JK series, and especially that refresh that we see in 2011. Personally, if I was gonna get a JK series, I wouldn't consider any model older than 2011 because of the huge improvements that we see inside this vehicle. 
Now, unlike old Wranglers of the past, it does come pretty heavily loaded with available features. You'll see we've got power door locks. We've got heated mirrors. Seats are full leather in this vehicle. Steering wheels leather wrapped. Controls for a number of vehicle settings, Bluetooth, voice activation features, and cruise control. Nice looking instrument cluster. Center console's got our audio system, which has AM, FM radio, Sirius radio, and then you can also connect your phone or other MP3 device using this auxiliary input. It's also got a six disc CD player. Power windows for both the front and rear. Climate control with heat and air conditioning. And we've got heated seats for driver and front passenger as well. This is for turning off traction control, hill descent control, some power outlets, our shifter for our four wheel drive, which does include a four low and high option. This vehicle is the automatic. We've got two cup holders, emergency brake, nice large center console here, which has a 12 volt outlet. You can also open just this top portion. And then you'll see we've also got a power outlet down below in the front here. Up above, we'll see those panels that can be removed. Likewise, the whole roof has that similar look with a roll cage built in. So if the roof isn't on, you're still safe for a rollover. And then you'll see we've got a self-dimming rear view mirror. The doors on the Wrangler can also be removed. You'll see it's got a unique hinge here, which helps to facilitate that. Again, one more cool feature that you get with the Wrangler, not available in any other model. And then looking in the back seat, you'll see it's pretty good back here in terms of overall space. Pretty good leg, head, and shoulder room. Got two cup holders down below here. Quick view up front. And then you can fold down these seat backs as well. Giving you pretty good cargo space in the rear. And you'll see it is a 60-40 split. These doors likewise can be removed. And then as we come around to the back, gotta open this lower portion first, and then the glass flips up. And you'll see cargo space is pretty good back here. Again, you get that pretty good look at the roll cage. And you'll see that we've got a subwoofer, and another 12 volt outlet back here as well. 2012 and newer models of the Wrangler have a 3.6 liter six cylinder with 285 horsepower, which is up 80 from the previous engine. That's paired to a six speed manual or five speed automatic transmission. EPA rating is 16 miles per gallon in the city and 21 miles per gallon. And all models of the Wrangler are now four wheel drive. The zero to 60 time with this engine is a very impressive 7.6 seconds. There's a lot that improves with the JK series model of the Wrangler and I'd highly recommend that if you're looking to get into one that you go for a 2012 or newer model as we get this interior update and that powertrain update. The powertrain update in particular is a huge improvement. We get more horsepower, it's almost four seconds faster to 60 miles an hour and we see an improvement in fuel economy. Likewise, inside we see a really nice improvement in the overall quality of the interior and just overall the vehicle has a much more refined modern look and feel to it. Now with the Wrangler in terms of drivability you make a lot of compromises on pavement because of the cool looks and because of the off-road capability so I'd highly recommend that if you're looking to get into one of these that you make yourself very aware of that. Now with that you do get a very cool looking vehicle there's really nothing else out there on the market like the Wrangler in terms of styling it's got that retro look to it, a rugged look to it. You've got the removable top on it, um, incredible off-road capability. There really isn't anything else out there on the market that's mainstream as good as the Wrangler in terms of that off-road capability. But with all that, there are some downsides. It's very boxy, and with that, you get a lot of wind noise. Uh, likewise, the aerodynamics aren't very good, and so it kind of pushes the vehicle around. Uh, suspension is designed for off-road capability, and so it's not the best for driving on the road. I kind of feel like the suspension is just kind of bouncing back and forth from all four corners, shifting weight back and forth every time we hit a bump. So it's not the greatest for you know driving on paved roads. Likewise, the steering's got a really soft, loose feel to it. And it's just a vehicle that takes a lot of work um, to maintain in a straight line. 
for highway driving. Now, I'm not saying by any means that that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't buy one of these because the cool factor and the off-road capability are immense on this vehicle. You just need to realize that you're making a lot of compromises as a result. All right, pulling onto the highway, we'll do a quick acceleration test. See, it's pretty quick. Likewise, transmission's pretty well suited to this engine. Huge improvement that you get with this powertrain when compared with the older versions. So that's the JK series model of the Wrangler. I'd highly recommend this vehicle if you want something that really stands out, that's got a really unique look to it and is incredibly off-road capable. I'd also highly recommend that you go with a 2012 or newer model. The interior update that we get in 2011 is a huge improvement. And likewise, the powertrain upgrade in 2012 is a no-brainer. You get additional horsepower, 0-60 time is almost four seconds faster than the older engine, and you get better fuel economy. So really great improvement in that sense. You definitely do get a few downsides with the Wrangler in terms of uh, wind noise, um, the driving mannerisms on paved roads aren't all that good, but there are a lot of really cool things about this vehicle and definitely a good option for somebody that wants that unique vehicle that's got that off-road capability. If you have any comments or questions on the Wrangler, leave them in the section below. For more car reviews, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching.